Simplify 3D version 5 is coming closer and closer to a public release and the response from the community is an overwhelming... Eh. Hey everybody, it's Joe, the 3D printing professor. And with Simplify 3D coming out with a new version, I, I wanted to get my thoughts out on why it's maybe significant and important, why people don't care, and what Simplify 3D can do to maybe fix the situation. So to begin with, if you don't know what Simplify 3D is, you probably haven't been 3D printing for nearly a decade. But when I first started 3D printing, I had a MakerBot Replicator 1. And the MakerBot Replicator 1 used a particular flavor of G-code that was called X3G. Basically, it was a version of G-code where the G-code commands were encoded digitally, so they couldn't be read by a regular text editor. But that did give it the advantage of absolutely nothing. There was no good reason for MakerBot to create X3G in the end. They were experimenting, they were trying things out, they were throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what stuck. And the fact that X3G is not available on just about any other 3D printer, I think pretty much speaks well for it. However, because it was this particular flavor of G-code, most slicers didn't produce for it, unless they were a slicer made by MakerBot, which were very few at the time, or this strange little slicer that was beholden to no manufacturer called Simplify 3D. They had set it up so that their slicer could release to X3G natively. They catered to my niche. And as such, I bought a, a license to Simplify 3D. Now, using Simplify 3D, I discovered that at the time, it had a lot of advantages. The slices that it produced, the models that it produced when it printed, were superior to other free slicers that were available at the time. However, it's been years since that time. And since that time, Prusa Slicer has matured incredibly and even when it was called slick threer or just slicer if you just want to be wrong um it produced really good prints and then cura also start cura actually at the time was not good but it's gotten better over time so we now have free software that produces prints that are in a lot of ways just as good as what simplify 3d was doing kind of kind of negating simplify 3d's advantage so now simplify 3d 5 is coming out and what's it got well one thing that it has is that it is not beholden to any manufacturer that it's not producing you know it's not being produced by Ultimaker for their Ultimaker 3D printers. And okay, also you could use it for any other 3D printer provided. Like if you've ever added a new 3D printer that isn't on their list, you recognize the, the footprints of Ultimaker in there because you've got to change the filament diameter from 2.85, which they're the only ones pretty much who use that, to 1.75, which everybody else uses. Or there's Prusa Slicer. And Prusa Slicer is great. But if you've ever tried to use Prusa Slicer for another manufacturer for Ulta, or for a Cura printer, or not a Cura printer, a Simplify, what's the name of that? A Creality. Why did I have a hard time with that this morning? It's early, but that's all right. Yeah, if you've ever tried to use Simplify 3D, yes, you can set it up for that. But it's a little bit more difficult than just hit and go on on a prusa printer which is what i use prusa slicer for i just use it for my prusa printers there's also raises idea maker which again you can use for other 3d printers but it's it's a little bit fiddly getting that going and they've done steps to make it easier and so if you can find the profile it's fine but again that's not their primary use case their primary use case is their 3d printers so all of those slicers are going to work better for their 3d printers and work okay for others whereas simplify 3d as it has 
no single manufacturer, it will work equally good on all of them. And if it works great on any of them, it'll work great on all of them. So that's the advantage that Simplify 3D says or, or could say that it has. But is it worth it? And at this time, considering how, how far developed 3D printing has been in Simplify 3D's absence, it's going to be a really hard sell. So I have some ideas and I want to throw these ideas out into the world, hoping that if they're good ideas, that they'll stick into other people's mind and that this will be the public outcry to them so that Simplify 3D can actually get back on track. Because I truly believe that Simplify 3D could be a force for good in this community again if all they do is this. Number one, and this is a scary one, stop charging for your slicer. Okay, I know that Biz, this is a business and they need to make money. So number two, put yourself up on Patreon. Now, I know that the response is going to be, well, Patreon doesn't make enough money for, for us to support a business, which is true. You're probably going to have to be part-time for a little while, but let me ask you, how is charging 60 bucks for, to your existing customers after such a long absence working out for you? Hmm? At least with Patreon, you convince people, hey, I'll tell you what, pay two or five bucks a month. And then most of the time people forget about their Patreon and they just keep paying that. And so over time, you'll probably get a lot more. And if you can provide a service that other people don't, then that will snowball into more and more people supporting you on Patreon. And what features don't people support? Well, remember, my first experience was in a niche. I needed that X3G format, and nobody else provided that X3G format. So focus in on niches. Belt printers. There aren't a lot of good slicers for belt printers. So if Simplify 3D started being the slicer that people could go to for belt printers, then... There's your niche. Or what about polar printers? Sure, there aren't a lot of people making polar 3D printers, but there, there are a few. And if you're the only slicer that slices for those polar printers, then you're the one who's going to be doing it. Oh, there, there are probably other examples. And if you can think of some, put them into comments so that we can discuss what other niches that Simplify 3D could focus on. Now, with focusing on niches, people are going to use your software. And with it pe being free, people are going to try it out. So if there are superior features in there, there will be people going, well, hold on for a second. Simplify 3D does this. Tool changers. There's another one, a new, an, another niche that they could focus on that would put them ahead of others in the game. So there's, there's a couple of ideas. Focus on niches. Um, and, and, and release your software for free and ask people to back you on Patreon on a reoccurring basis. If they do this, Simplify 3D could be back in a big way. But what they're doing right now, locking it behind a paywall so that nobody can really try it out and find out if it's good and, and tell other people, hey, you know, I use Simplify 3D because this, that, and the other thing, it's not going to work for them. I, I think this is the only way forward for them. And, and I want Simplify 3D to do well, if only because I want to see them be a force for good in the 3D printing community. One of the greatest things about this community is that we all have helped each other get better and better. Simplify 3D, we can help them. They can help us. And we can rocket 3D printing to the moon, possibly literally in the near future, if we all work together on this one. Anyways, that's my thoughts. I wanted to get those out. Hey, if you're not aware, I've started a second 3D printing channel that's all about using Blender to make models for 3D printing. And I'm doing a lot of work over there right now. So I'll put a link in the description where you can check that out. But otherwise, I want to thank you very much for watching. And 
I'll catch you next time. Simplify 3D, I hope, I hope that we'll see great things in the future. Thank you.